this time of the day, there'll be a special guest, but we didn't reveal who it was. I thought, who's that going to be? As it turned out, I got a nice call to be able to do uh, the Prime Minister of Greece, uh, Kyriakos Mistotakis. Let's uh, bring him to the stage for a one-on-one -on -one interview. Thank you, John. Good to see you. Um, we, we live a lot in this region, although I've just re recently moved back to London on optics. This is, I think, interesting that you, the Greek Prime Minister is here in the Middle East. Uh, you had bilateral meetings with uh, His Royal Highness Mohammed bin Salman with the Crown Prince of Bahrain. Uh, what does it tell us before we get into the development and the rebuilding campaign in Greece about strategic relations between the heart of the Mediterranean and the Gulf? What do you think you can build on here after the visit? Well, first of all, uh, Your Royal Highnesses, thank you so much for uh, having me at this um, um, uh, very, very interesting gathering. But it should not be a surprise that the Greek Prime Minister uh, has strong ties uh, uh, with uh, um, the Gulf region. Uh, after all, uh, we live in the same uh, broad uh, neighborhood. Uh, we share the same uh, geopolitical uh, challenges. And uh, since I took over as uh, Prime Minister, one of my main priorities in terms of foreign policy was to re-establish um, uh, strong ties uh, with the Gulf. It is my second visit um, uh, to Saudi Arabia, and I think we're at the beginning of forging a very strong strategic partnership uh, between our two countries, uh, which uh, has uh, you know, many different aspects, geopolitical, but also economical. So I'm very excited uh, to, to be here. We had a very, very uh, interesting uh, uh, discussion uh, with His Royal Highness, and I think a lot of good things are going to come out of uh, uh, this visit for both our countries. Is it a natural affinity? I know you have uh, deep relations with the UAE. Uh, this is the largest economy in the Middle East and North Africa. From an investment standpoint, a uh, strategic uh, alliance also for the Eastern Mediterranean, how do you see it? Well, uh, the Eastern Mediterranean uh, is uh, uh, a region of common interest. Uh, and Greece uh, is, uh, finds itself with Cyprus uh, on the outer edge of the European Union. We have done a lot of work to convince Europe uh, regarding the strategic importance of the Eastern uh, Mediterranean um, uh, with regards to migration, with regards to energy, with regards to geopolitical uh, stability. Uh, and the broader stability of, uh, of the area is a common concern um, uh, to, to all of us. We have uh, um, uh, committed to uh, the protection of the, of the kingdom uh, uh, through a Patriot uh, battery, which we have uh, deployed uh, together with uh, uh, other uh, allies. Uh, and uh, we can certainly further strengthen uh, this uh, strategic partnership uh, because at the end of the day, uh, countries that uh, uh, promote stability, uh, international law, um, respect for the, uh, the law of the seas, uh, um, uh, at the end of the day, these are the guiding principles uh, which uh, lead, us, uh, lead us forward. I wasn't going to begin here, but I think with the presence of His Royal Highness and uh, the Crown Prince of Bahrain, it's, it's very interesting to, to leap into the Eastern Mediterranean. Could it be, if you get the development right, a counterbalance to Russia's influence with natural gas into the European Union? But this is the window of opportunity, is it not? So you have a security pact with France, a major move. The U.S. renewed its security uh, agreement with Greece, another major move. You're building the alliances here uh, in the Gulf. Is it time to move to development of, of the natural gas? And can you really fend off Turkey's desire to encroach in that territory as a result? Very much so. Uh, I'm glad you point out that we signed two very important strategic partnerships over the past month, uh, a strategic partnership with France uh, and a five-year a defense and cooperation agreement with uh, the United States. Uh, at the same time, we are looking at the uh, energy situation in Europe with the spikes in the prices of natural gas. Uh, and we should be telling ourselves uh, what is the logical way to diversify uh, our supply of natural gas. And I do believe, as most of my European colleagues, that uh, natural gas will be a transition fuel for the foreseeable future. So if that is the case, how can we leverage 
uh, supplies of gas in the Eastern Mediterranean uh, and, uh, and the Middle East. And there are you know, various ideas that have been um, you know, put forward. Uh, it could be a pipeline, uh, the, the East Med pipeline that brings uh, gas directly from Cyprus, from uh, Egypt, from Israel um, uh, to Greece. Or uh, it could be liquefied natural gas um, uh, that can be transported to Egypt. Uh, liquefied and regasified uh, in Greece, uh, where we have the capacity to supply not just the Greek gas network, but also the European gas network. Uh, so this is uh, stage one. Stage two would be to promote our electricity interconnections. We've signed uh, an agreement uh, with, uh, uh, with Egypt, but I'm sure there's also going to be a lot of uh, interest in terms of extending these types of agreements also with, uh, with Saudi Arabia. If um, um, this uh, area has the capacity to produce very cheap um, electricity from renewables, and I'm primarily referring to the sun, wouldn't it be of mutual interest to bring this electricity into the European market? So how do you do it? You build an interconnection uh, either from Egypt or from um, um, uh, Israel uh, into Greece, and from Greece the electricity uh, will move um, uh, into the European market. And if we look further into the future, if we talk about hydrogen, uh, hydrogen will need to find its way uh, into the European uh, market. So thinking ahead, Greece again is uh, by nature of our, by virtue of our geography, uh, very appropriately positioned uh, as, uh, as a transit country for all uh, sources of, uh, of energy. At the same time, what we're doing is to develop our own uh, renewable uh, capacity. Uh, we've shut down, we'll be shutting down all our coal plants the latest by 2028, mm. and we're investing heavily in, uh, in renewables. And the new frontier for us, which is of great interest, and I'm sure also of great interest to possibly to investors uh, from the region, is offshore wind, uh, where we will be presenting a, a, a legal framework very soon uh, in order to take advantage of the significant wind potential that we have uh, uh, in Greece when it comes to Good. offshore Let's wind. Let's get to, I'd like to see if, you're, if there's interest here in Saudi Arabia, the UAE, uh, and other regional investors to come into the gas market? Do they see the same potential that you're seeing right now? Is this part well, of the I would, uh, uh, most, most certainly, but uh, uh, you know, our discussions uh, covered many different fields, not just uh, energy. I mean, the main case that I do want to, to make today is that uh, the Greece of 2021 uh, has no comparison to the Greece of the previous decade. Uh, we've gone through a very difficult period, uh, a very deep financial crisis, as you know. Uh, but since uh, our government took over, and in spite of COVID, uh, and in spite of the geopolitical challenges vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Turkey, we've implemented very significant reforms, we've lowered taxes, the investment climate is much more attractive, and we are attracting today significant amount of foreign investment, unprecedented amount of foreign investment. So I think Greece is right at the beginning of a long-term growth cycle, and I, I do want you know, capital from, from this part of the world to be part of our success story. Uh, and we already see a, a lot of interest in many, many different um, uh, sectors. Look at hospitality, for example, where we've always been leaders, uh, but we need um, uh, more you know, high-end uh, hospitality uh, facilities. Uh, and uh, this is a sector where there are also natural synergies between Greece and Saudi Arabia. We have the expertise. Um, Saudi Arabia is looking to do incredible, very big things in the hospitality sector. So there's another area of possible oh. cooperation where we can actually export you know, our know-how uh, to a country that is just beginning you know, to scratch the surface of its potential when it comes oh, to these types of investments. You talked about FDI, and it's quite interesting. I, this framework of uh, Greece 2.0, which is a revitalization plan. Uh, in my morning plenary session, we talked about uh, rebuilding the social contract. Uh, and did you think you redefined Greece during what was a heck of a challenge with COVID-19, the discipline in Greece? People were quite surprised, the adherence to the, uh, the legal frameworks that you sort of, uh, put into place. But how does it change the image of Greece then as a destination with the security apparatus you have, Anne? the response to COVID-19, the reopening to tourism. Can you put those together? We did uh, extremely well during the, the first wave of the pandemic. We shut down the country very quickly. Uh, I was actually quite surprised. Uh, I mean, people really complied. We explained uh, in very clear uh, terms what we, what we had to do. We needed to buy ourselves time to build up uh, our ICU capacity and to strengthen 
uh, our hospital system. We haven't done as well uh, in the other phases of the pandemic, but overall, uh, I think Greece is going to be a, a winner um, when, when the pandemic is, uh, is over. Um, uh, we've managed to rapidly digitize the state. Uh, it's, I think, a, a big success that you can uh, basically interact now with the state uh, on, 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 in many different services from your mobile phone, you know, cutting down a bureaucracy, projecting the image of a, of a new, more confident um, uh, Greece. Uh, and I think people uh, abroad are, uh, are, are clearly uh, noticing what is, uh, what, what is happening in, uh, in Greece. Uh, if you look at our overall financial performance, uh, in spite of the fact that we have high levels of debt, uh, our borrowing costs are record, are a record low. Um, uh, we, with, the economy is going to grow more than 6% this year, probably much more. We still don't know the exact numbers. We managed to open to tourists in a very disciplined manner. I think we were, um, we've done very well in terms of our tourism season. We communicated very clearly, this is what you can do, this is what you cannot do. We were the leaders um, in terms of launching the EU digital certificate, which has been a huge success, not just in Europe, many other countries. Uh, have used this interface uh, to certify your COVID um, uh, status. Uh, and um, uh, we, we expect uh, an even better um, year, obviously, next year. Uh, this year, we, uh, we're probably going to be at you know, 60, maybe 70 percent of what we were in 2019 in terms of revenues, which is above what we had budgeted. Yes. But next year um, uh, should be a bumper year um, uh, for, for Greece. And in terms of you know, redefining the social contract, my mandate was all about jobs. I want to make sure I bring down unemployment, bring, you know, offer young Greeks the opportunity um, to live in their country. You know, we have so many talented expats working uh, in the Gulf uh, region. Um, uh, and I'm happy when Greeks are mobile, but I'm happier when they return to their home country. Uh, and I think for the first time, what we see is a reversal in the brain drain. Um, a lot of talented Greeks who say, OK, I spent a decade abroad, but now is the right time to come back to Greece. Uh, because for us, I think uh, the real constraint is not necessarily going to be capital. I think there is a lot of interest and I think we will have you know, significant announcements also uh, as far as capital deployment for the kingdom. It's, it's human capital and how we make sure um, uh, we, we give our young people the opportunities to live a better life. And one last point on this issue of the social contract. Uh, I think the reason why many foreign investors are looking at Greece it's not just our geopolitical position, what we discussed before, uh, or you know, our beautiful beaches. Uh, um, it's also the people. Uh, we have incredibly talented, uh, um, uh, young, uh, young well Greeks, uh, very well educated, um, uh, uh, with competitive uh, salaries. Although I do expect, uh, you know, salaries to to converge to the uh, EU uh, means. So, uh, if uh, if this is a global, you know, battle for for talent. Uh, I think Greece uh, ha was not on the map until very recently, and uh, we are uh, we're making, a, a, I think, what is a, a credible um, a comeback in our part of the region as a pillar of stability, of geopolitical stability, strong alliances uh, with partners, new alliances with new partners, which frankly I think we had neglected in the past, uh, uh, at the same time very active within the European Union. Uh, at, the, at the forefront of the change that needs to take place within the uh, European Union. Just look at, for example, what we agreed uh, last July uh, after COVID, borrowing 750 million, billion euros in total. Uh, Greece will receive 32 billion euros uh, uh, as a result of this package, what we call the RRF, the that's recovery. A, that's a really large... So that's a lot of money for... It's a lot of money in objective terms, but it's certainly a lot of money for Greece. So for our, you know, our, our job is to have mature projects uh, with good returns for financial uh, investors uh, and add public money, Greek money, European money to private capital, leverage private capital uh, and, and really change, uh, you know, change the country. We have, we're it, a, if I may, um, it's interesting, we only have a few minutes left because you said tourism receipts are up 60 to 70 percent above 2019. Not above, of, of 2019. 19, okay. 19. So we, uh, but if you look at August, for example, we were above 2019. Yeah. So I expect next year we will make up all the lost ground of COVID and we could even exceed our 2019 Interesting. Numbers. But beyond that, which is interesting, I always had this vision as a Greek American that you could be the financial capital of the Mediterranean, uh, the trade capital of the region. And now we're seeing Pfizer. Volkswagen, Microsoft, some major names that are using it as a hub. I mean, 
Is that the design here, that you can actually be a heart of a very large market if you get it right? Because you have this triangle of fiscal reforms, banking reforms, labor reforms, tax reforms. Is that your ambition here? Um, uh, yes. Uh, if you look at banking, for example, our, our banks were constrained by uh, you know, very high percentage of non-performing loans. We've addressed this problem. Uh, they've raised the raising capital now on their own. Uh, so they have a growth story to tell. If you look at Greece as a trade center, you know, the logistics opportunities, you know, privatizing our, uh, our ports, uh, you know, it is quicker um, uh, to ship products to Central Europe from Greece than it is to go around Gibraltar and to go to Hamburg or Rotterdam. So you can't argue with, um, uh, with, with geography. So, uh, but again, in order for us to do that, we need, you know, political stability, a reform-oriented uh, government with credible partners. Uh, with sound, uh, sound fiscal uh, policy and with a friendly business environment. It's not, really, you know, it's not really rocket science, but it takes a lot of work to actually get it done uh, on, on the field. Good. I, I, I'm not ever questioning your competency. Then I was looking at your pedigree. So you went to Harvard for undergrad, Stanford for graduate school, and circled back to get your MBA, am I correct, at Harvard Business School. It's a pretty good pedigree. What's the next two years? Because you've been in power for just over two years that you want to get done here. And then I we'll can tell up. you these uh, degrees don't necessarily prepare you for, you know, dealing with a pandemic or the, you know, the, the, or challenges, crisis, right? or the challenges of today's, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, gov uh, governance, because we really have to govern. We have to do two things simultaneously. We have to deal with constant crisis and they won't go away. And we have to govern at the same time and think long term. Uh, so, yes, I'm, I'm prime minister for two and a half years. I intend to see out my term. Um, I think we've made, a, we've made a convincing case to, to win a second election in, in, in 2023. Uh, and we'll continue, you know, pressing, you know, full speed ahead with, uh, with the reforms that we have in, envisioned. We have a very clear plan of where we want to see the country in 2030. We also have our own um, uh, 2030 uh, vision, and it is very, uh, very ambitious, uh, and uh, provided the Greek people continue to place their trust in us, we've, I'm sure we can deliver. Well, final point in 30 seconds, you know, the French security pact, the U.S. renewing the security pact, the alliance between Egypt, Israel, Cyprus, and Greece in the Eastern Med says a lot. For an investor that's looking, would you say there's not the threat of Turkey, we are secure, our allies have stepped up? Yes, we are secure. Uh, I don't think there is a, a geopolitical threat. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, Turkey will also realize uh, that this aggressive posturing um, uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean uh, is not going to lead um, uh, anywhere. So I think we've, we've set up our alliances. We've drawn our lines very, very uh, clearly. Uh, and um, uh, I, I, I do hope uh, that at some point, Turkey will constructively engage with us to resolve the one main outstanding issue we have, which is the delimitation of our maritime zones. We agreed with Italy, we agreed with Egypt, based on international law. Uh, we're always open for dialogue, but we will not be intimidated and we will not accept our sovereign rights to be compromised. Good. Uh, the Prime Minister, of course, had the choice to give a 10-minute uh, address or to sit down and have a, a much more in-depth, candid discussion. I'm glad you opted for the second, and thanks for inviting well, thank me. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you.